wouldn't it wouldn't have been a hole would it had a fork. What do you say there, Mr. Steven? <laughs> Getting cold. <laughs> It's quite a few over, ain't it, Mr. Joe? There's more popping up out of the bottom here. I can see one bull. Can we make it to that ridge over there? Yeah, I can go down. I can see that little guy bugling. Well, there's a bull here. That was a pretty good one coming over the top of me and it broke. I'm not sure. It was a broken one. Yeah, it was. Okay. Camera's still on him? Yeah. Here we go. I'll stop. <laughs> what do you think about that? <laughs> Just like that? Just like that. <laughs> How far was that, Joe? It's uh, 8 8.30. 8.30. Yeah. That's where you was holding that. That bullet was right on track. You could see it. Yeah. Pow. I thought I'd take a second uh, while we had some downtime to show you guys the gear that we're using. I mean, one thing for me getting into this was, you know, I wanted to film this, but nobody ever really shows the equipment that you're using. So today I thought I'd show you guys what we're using. I'm actually recording with a Nikon D500. Um, I can't show you that because I'm recording through it, obviously. But... Um, to get these long range shots, I mean, to buy a lens um, for a DSLR camera or something like that, I mean, you're gonna end up spending 40 grand to get a lens that would do this. So we're using a Swarovski spotting scope and they have an adapter. They make adapters for Canon and, uh, and Nikon both. And uh, it just, you remove your lens, plug this on the camera and you get the animal in the spotting scope and uh, this adapter slides right on the back end. They, I forgot what they call this kit, but anyway, it uh, slides right on the back end, and you're filming right through the um, right through the spotting scope. It's a really cool ordeal. Um, one thing is, you really need a sturdy uh, a sturdy tripod. We're using uh, tripods from Really Right Stuff, and this is their fluid head, uh, one of their larger tripods, and this is one of their smaller tripods. They make four different sizes, but up here in this wind and everything, this little tripod is not quite enough to hold that spotting scope and everything steady enough, so we're packing the big one. Wesley, can you grab my pack too? I'm going to show them that pack. It's actually in the back there. But um, we're hauling all this stuff around, or I'm hauling all this stuff around in the pack, but that allows us to get some really good footage. We're catching bullet trace on it. Um, everything's worked out really well. I, I couldn't be more pleased for the value of what you get from from that system. Um, we also brought along some uh, our Swarovski um, 
12 by 56 uh, binoculars. Everything on these tripods, we've got really right stuff, adapters on everything. Um, but we've got this set up on the animal recording. Since we only have like a three inch LCD, uh, we've got a backup spotter on the binos. And you can see, man, you can see the world with these things. You can see Trace so good. So I know it's a lot of gear to carry around, but when you're playing this game, this, this kind of gear is imperative. Um, so that clips right in there. If you weren't recording, this would still be a really good piece of kit. It um, doesn't weigh much of anything. The only thing that really weighs anything in this, this whole piece here is this spotting scope and the fluid head. Fluid head's pretty, pretty heavy. Um, we're able to pack everything up. This is a uh, stone glacier pack. Uh, I think it's the 6900 is the size. Um, still got some stuff in it, but it's a little loose right now because we're not actually using it. And um, I got that off of a recommendation from my guide in New Zealand, uh, Liam. Um, let's see what else we have here. Um, last but not least, we've got our gun. Um, this is a new gun that we came out with this year. This is, uh, we call it the Warden. And uh, we really just call it the Warden. It's on the Macmillan Game Warden stock. So that's, we just kind of went with the Warden. Um, but it's a Macmillan stock. Um, this has got uh, cryptic Highlander camo on it. It's got a carbon fiber proof barrel. It's got our uh, fat bastard muzzle brake. Um, let's see here. It's got our action. Um, a Swarovski Z8i um, 2.3 to 18 by 56 scope. Uh, we've put a little level on here um, from Ops Inc. And let's see, it's got our rings on it. It's chambered in a uh, 338 Norma generally. I did this one in a 338 Norma Improved. Uh, it's a big cartridge uh, shooting a 212 ELDX at 31. 50 roughly um, and uh, I mean you could I mean this gun the standard cartridge is a 300 Norma but I just wanted to do an improved because whatever um, no special reason other than I just wanted it but uh, anyway um, it's a really good package the gun itself is seven and a half pounds um, it's got our trigger guard on it I mean it's got everything of ours that we could put on it um, our Harris bipod we've modified a little bit up here in these hills there's a lot of brush you can see behind me well it's not a great example behind me but there's a lot of sagebrush in here and sometimes you can't get prone so um, there's a company called primary adaptive system solutions we'll call it pass for short that's what they call it anyway um, you can buy these adapters at uh, core shooting supply and basically take a Harris bipod this is the BRMS and we're able to, you put these little adapters here and you can change out all kinds of feet that, um, that work with an Atlas bipod, the Atlas feet. You can put the little claws. Um, let's see, I'm trying to, um, there's a bunch of different adapters that you can stick on these, but this, these are the past system pieces here. And you can put all these adapters to do different things. In this case, I've got the solid carbon feet on there and these things are super rigid. So if you wanted to have a seat looking over uh, a hill, say I was like this, you know, I can extend them uh, with my legs. They do make extensions too, but you can see, you know, I could get in a position like this and I mean, that's fairly steep and I'm really comfortable. So anyway, all this gear, sometimes you can get kind of over geared, but I mean, I, I don't know. I'd hate to come up on a hunt like this and not have the gear to, to make this happen. Um, oh, I forgot some other stuff here. Um, Kestrel, this is uh, the applied ballistics model that uh, we're getting all our data with. And um, rangefinder, we're using the, I'm using the Swarovski rangefinding binoculars. And we've hit, how far have we hit out here? I think the farthest thing we've hit is 19, 19 something, something yeah. almost two grand, 1970, something like that. So you're not going to do that back home in Georgia in our weather, but out here in this uh, thin air, um, you can do that. We're six, well, I think it's about 6,000 feet down here and about 8,000 feet up top. But anyway, that's the gear that we're using. I hope that that helps. If you guys have any questions, um, you can drop me an email to Jared. It's J-E-R-E-D at AmericanPrecisionArms.com. Thank you.